What's going on guys, my name is Tony and welcome to another Source of Light video. So today's video is actually requested by a lot of you guys. I get a lot of comments in regards to negative thoughts and how to overcome those negative thoughts and especially being a believer of God, why do you have these negative thoughts? So I wanna quickly skim through this, help you guys through the word of God to get through these negative thoughts. And this video is gonna be a little longer than usual, but please stick around, I promise you, you are going to enjoy it and it's gonna bring some light in your situation. So without further ado, Let's jump right into it. So when I see these comments, I can't help but be brought back to a scripture verse that I would always go to when I was dealing with this, because it brought me motivation, but also encouragement and strength from God. And so that is found in 1 Peter 5, and we're gonna go ahead and start with verse six. So 1 Peter 5, verse six, it says, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand. So let me stop there real quick. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand. What does that mean to humble yourself? Quick version is humbling yourself is knowing that God is the greater one, that you are the weaker link and you need God's help to get through what you are going through. So humbling yourself kind of looks like this, Lord, I try to do it by myself. I can't do it by myself. I don't want to do it by myself. I've tried, I've failed, and I need you, God. I recognize that you are stronger and I can only be free through you and with your spirit. And as you begin to practice to humble yourself and by going to God and showing him that you need him, things will begin to change. And it, and it says to humble yourselves under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. So there is a due time. And I'm going to make a separate video in regards to timing, God's timing, and why his timing matters over our timing. But for now, let's keep moving forward. And it goes on to say in verse 7, cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So whatever you are going through, First off, humble yourself under God's mighty hand. Secondly, cast all of your cares upon him, all of your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. He loves you. He's waiting for you to cry out to him so that he can give you strength and that he can set you free from what you are going through. So cast all of your cares, all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Verse 8, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Verse 9, resist him, standing firm in the faith. And now this, this is where I wanted to go. Because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. So that's the one that I'm talking about, the one that I would go to for encouragement, is that your brothers in Christ around the whole world are enduring and going through the same things that you are going through. So when you come to my videos and comment saying that you're going through something, I don't know if you guys have noticed or went through the other's comments, but there are multiple of us going through the same thing as believers in Christ. Why is that? It's because the Lord has a great plan for you. The Lord, you have a great future. The Lord has a great future, a great plan for you. And he wants to use you and he is going to use you for mighty things in the kingdom of God. Now the enemy is scared of you. You may not see that. You may think you're a timid, weak person and you don't know what your plan is. But first off, God knows your plan. But secondly, the enemy knows that God is going to use you and he has a great plan for you. That's why the enemy is attacking you so hard. So whenever you're going through something like this, rejoice. Be glad that the enemy is taking time out of his day to attack you because that means he is scared of you. And that means God has a great plan for you. Now, the reason believers go through this is not because we're weak and the, and the Lord's trying to teach us a lesson and, and, and throw his worst at us. No, it's because the enemy is scared of you because God has a plan for you, for your life, and you're going to impact others. So rejoice, be glad, be happy that you are going through this because God is going to get you through this and then he's going to use you. And that's why the enemy is so scared that he is trying to take you out but he can't. Okay, so now, before I close, I wanna get in depth with our thoughts and how to transform the negative into the positive. So I wanna lay out a foundation for you guys to kind of imagine, okay? So imagine a computer. You have a motherboard in the computer, which is the hardware. And the motherboard is the thing that functions every aspect of the computer. The motherboard is what gets the computer moving. It's what, when you click something, it gets moving. It tells all the other parts in the, in the computer to run and, and move properly and do what it's supposed to do. Okay, so imagine your mo the motherboard in the computer and imagine your brain, okay? Your brain is just like the motherboard. Your brain is what wires your whole body to do what you tell it to do. So you tell your, your brain to move your fingers, it's gonna move your fingers. You tell your brain to talk, it's gonna talk. 
Same as the motherboard. You, you tell the motherboard what to do and it's gonna start doing it, it's gonna start functioning and telling all these other parts what to do. Same as your brain, okay? So our brain is healthy, the motherboard is healthy. Now, on a motherboard, when you download something on your computer and you get a virus, it goes onto your software. And that virus starts affecting the way your software runs and, the, and then it starts affecting how slow the computer is, it starts being sluggish, it starts being slow, all these pop-ups coming up, and sooner or later it just doesn't want to function right anymore. It's like a whole new computer because of that virus that you got on that computer. And it's the same thing with our minds. Our mind is the motherboard, and if we allow viruses, which are negative thoughts, to stay in there, and if we allow negative thoughts, which are viruses, to come into our mind, yeah, we're gonna run a little sluggish. We are gonna run the way we were meant to run because our mind controls the function of our body. Our mind controls what we do. So if we're feeding our mind with negative thoughts and we're dwelling on it, no wonder you feel depressed. No wonder you feel like you can't go outside and enjoy the day. No wonder you feel like you can't talk to someone and you're scared because there's a virus. You've allowed the negative thoughts to infiltrate your mind and now you have a virus controlling the way that your motherboard operates. Okay, now it sounds a little scary, doesn't it? Kind of, but not really, because the motherboard, what happens when you get a virus on your software? You get an antivirus, wipe it out, you're good to go. Same with our mind. You get the antivirus. What is an antivirus? Antivirus is the word of God. When you start feeding your mind with the word of God, this is the antivirus for you to, to infiltrate the negative thoughts, kick it out, and replace it with positive thoughts. So replace those viruses with the antivirus, which is the word of God. Now, if you don't even want to get a virus on your computer, keep the antivirus running. Keep the word of God running. Keep going to the word of God. You know, our physical body needs at least three meals a day, okay? And that's, that's at least three meals a day for us to function right and to properly go throughout the day with energy and all that good stuff. Imagine how much more we have to feed our spirit. There is a fight going on in the spiritual realm. So I feel like our spirits are more hungry than our physical body. So we have to feed our spirit even more than our physical body. So continue to flood your mind and your heart with the Word of God and take out that virus. Okay, so I have some verses I want to end off here about our thoughts and taking control from our negative and bringing them back positive. So I'm going to run through it real quick. In Romans 12, 2, we see, it says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? With the Word of God. You renew your mind, wake up every morning, meditate on the Word. Throughout the day, Meditate on the word. At night, read it before bed, meditate it on it before you go to sleep. Now, if it seems too complicated and you're like, okay, that sounds too hard, where do I begin? Just pick up the Bible at any opportunity that you have. Get the Bible app on your phone, pick a verse, meditate on it. Read it, meditate on it. And then if you forget it throughout the day, pick it back up, meditate on it. Just keep doing that because you are going to renew your mind and then you are going to be transformed because you're renewing your mind. Second verse is Philippians 4.8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So the Bible knows that our thoughts are very important, and it tells us to think on things which are praiseworthy, which are truth, which is the Word of God, and anything that is excellent and worthy of praise. Do you have kids? Think upon your kids. Your kids are a gift from God. You have a, 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 a wife? Think upon your wife. That is a gift of God. Think, think of things that are praiseworthy, that are excellent. Anything that you can think of. And if you can't think of anything, open up the Bible. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. That is something to be praiseworthy of. That is something of excellence and something to dwell on. So if you don't know what to think about and you think you have nothing good going on in your life, open up the word of God and I'm sure you'll find something to be praiseworthy of. 2 Timothy 1.7 states, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. So when you're feeling fear, that's not from God. And if that's not from God, who is that from? That's from the lion, the roaring lion. And the enemy cannot speak anything but lies. The Bible says that the enemy is the father of all lies. So if he tells a lie because he can't speak truth, so anything he tells you is a lie, what does that mean? 
the opposite is true. So when he's telling you, you know, you're going to die, you're sick, you're lonely, you're depressed, you're never going to find somebody, you're always going to deal with this, you're never going to overcome, that's because he knows you're going to overcome, you're going to find somebody, you're going to come out better, you're going to come out stronger, you're going to get through this, you're going to come out of this depression. Why? Because God is greater and he is getting you through this. So don't listen to the enemy's lies. Just remember, the opposite is truth. So what he tells you, dwell on the opposite. Worthy of praise. The opposite of what the enemy tells you is the truth. So start praising, thanking God that you are coming out of this depression, these negative thoughts are turning around, and that God is going to use you to help others. Almost finished here. We got Proverbs 4.23. It says, above all else, guard your heart, for every, everything you do will flourish or everything you do flows from it. So this is just, I just wanna tell you guys, guard your hearts, be careful what you watch, be careful what you listen to, be careful what you read, be careful the people you hang around. These are huge impacts on your spirit, on what you allow in your head, because if you're watching something depressing, if you're watching something about somebody who dies from cancer, you're gonna to start to worry about that. Then he's gonna bring fear into you and that's exactly what I went through. I remember I would have to be careful what I watched because when I would watch something about someone being sick or somebody dying or somebody going through something, I couldn't help but to think that was me because the enemy is going to use any open door that he can. So don't give him an open door. Guard your heart. Watch what your eyes see. Listen, be careful what your ears hear and guard your heart. Lastly, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. How do we take captive every thought? When you start thinking that you're depressed, right? You're lonely, you're sick. Don't allow it to stay. Take captive the thoughts. When you think that, okay, I'm, I'm sick. No, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Satan, I resist you. I tell you to shut up. I tell you to get behind me. Father, I thank you that I am not sick, but I am strong. By your stripes, I am healed. What am I doing? First off, I'm taking captive the negative thoughts, right? The enemy says I'm depressed. No, I rebuke that. I am not depressed. I am happy. By his stripes, I am healed. So I took captive those thoughts. Then I made it obedient to Christ by quoting the word of God. There are so many word, there are so many promises in the word of God that you should be quoting when you're going through this. You just have to find it. And how do you find it? By meditating on it. Go on Google, type in verses on depression, verses on anxiety, and start quoting those day after day until you begin to feel better because the Word of God is living. It says that this, this Word right here, the Bible, is a sharp-edged sword. It is living. It is a sharp-edged sword piercing to the marrow and bones. So when you start speaking the Word of God, it is going to do work. It is living. And as you begin to quote this, it brings life to your spirit, brings life to your flesh, and sooner or later, those thoughts will almost be non-existent. You'll be able to rebuke the enemy like that and move on. The enemy still tries to attack me with negative thoughts, but what do I do? Go straight to the Word of God, and instead of it lasting days and days and hours, no. When the enemy attacks me, he will be lucky to stay for 10 minutes, and then it's over with. Why? Because luckily the Lord got me through it, and now I have a basis to stand on, and I know what to do. The Word of God. I'm telling you guys. Go to the Word of God, dwell on it, meditate on it, speak it over your life, and take captive those negative thoughts and make it obedient to Christ. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a little longer than usual, but I hope that you stuck around because I believe that it will help you as you begin to do it on your day-to-day -day basis as it helped me. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Comment down below for anything you might, might need help with or any testimonies that you have. I love reading it. Thank you so much, guys. God bless, and let's change the world.